Peace and good vibes. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me. What's up, subscribers? Thank you for subscribing. And if you come across this video and you like what you see, please, please, please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. So right now the topic is Freaknik. Now, if you are around my age or close to my age or you're part of the Generation X crew, then you know all about Freaknik. Now with me, I've never had the opportunity to go to Freaknik and uh, see what it was all about personally or from a personal experience, but I've heard about it and um, I've seen some clips on television about how it would go down in the late 80s and to the uh, early to mid to late 90s um, in Atlanta. So without further ado let's get into the article and this is an article coming from blackamericaweb.com I always like to give the source <clears throat> or the sources and this article was written by the editor at uh, Global Grind and the article is fans hope they don't catch their mama <laughs> their mama name on Hulu's Freaknik documentary so Hulu is um, in the process of creating a documentary about Freaknik, uh, which I believe started like in 1988 for the HBCUs, um, uh, for them to uh, get together for their spring picnic, you know, and just have fun and have a good time. And then um, that's how it all started. And then it, it grew into something much more phenomenal and much more bigger than just the uh, picnic. So we're going to read a little bit of the article here. And it says, under the caption, Hulu announced Freaknik, the wildest party never told documentary from executive producers Jermaine Dupree and Uncle Luke. So when we talk about Uncle Luke, remember we're talking about that Miami bass hip-hop music and he was real big in the 80s and 90s with the two live crew. Um, and we all know Jermaine Dupree um, from the ATL. Um, you know, he uh, brought us, you know, entertainers like, um, you know, the Brat, uh, Lil Bow Wow. Uh, he brought us, um, can't forget, uh, Criss Cross. So, you know, a um, lot of entertainment came out of, of Atlanta um, during uh, that era and during that time. Uh, many fans express their concern online, hoping they don't see their parents in the upcoming documentary. Um, of the <laughs> upcoming documentary, so that's that's that uh, the the newer generation, the Generation Z. So Generation X, which is my generation, is my generation's kids. So um, I think that this is going to be a very interesting documentary. So let's read on. <laughs> The streaming platform has secured the rights to tell one of the most legendary stories in black culture and history, Freaknik. Variety shared an exclusive report that Hulu announced Freaknik, the wildest party never told, an original documentary chronicling how the infamous event came to prominence. It will also document its swift demise. According to the, pro uh, to the project synopsis, it recounts the rise and fall of a small Atlanta HBCU picnic that exploded into an influential street party and spotlighted ATL as a major cultural stage, raising the question, can the magic of Freaknik be brought back 40 years later? And my answer to that is no, because back then, Freaknik had its day. It had its prime. It was... It was a great time, you know, where people just got together and partied and have a good time. But now, 40 years later, if we are talking about recreating what, what happened in the late 80s to the 90s, I just don't see that happening, especially if this generation gets involved with it. Now, if my generation if recreates something and um, if we try to go back and recreate the, those old school Freaknik days, I don't know, it might happen. It might, you know, be something legendary again. But, I mean, I think that Freaknik has had its moments, it's had its time, it's had its day. I would love to see another Freaknik, but 
you know, without all of the hoopla that came with it back in the day. All right, let's read on. The coveted spring break event was established in the mid-80s in Atlanta as a small picnic for students of local historically black colleges and universities. By the 1990s, the festival had surpassed its humble, its humble beginnings and evolved into what the event is remembered for today, inviting dance contests, concerts, parties, sporting events, rap sessions, job fairs, and more. So if we could have something like that again, but we keep it on a positive note and a positive level, I don't see anything wrong with it. But of course, Freaknik really got out of control, like as the years progressed, you know, um, and um, it was... It was a time to be alive then, and it was a time to remember. Let's continue. By 1998, the Associated Press reported Atlanta Committee for Black College Spring Break should no longer welcome Freaknik, citing sexual assaults, violence against women, and public safety concerns. Now, that's when it started to get out of hand. And things wild out. And as you can remember in JD's song, Welcome to Atlanta, he talked about that in his verse. Um, so, however, the desire for an in, for an event like Freaknik to return is ever-present. Many Atlanta organizers or organizations, event curators, and rappers like 21 Savage have attempted to recreate the moment. But according to the OGs, there's nothing quite like the real thing, and I have to agree. Um, you know, you can't really recreate um, an era that the that 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 original era. We already know that we can't. But I mean, I think that if we had a freaknik now, of course, it'd be totally di totally different because. We're living in a totally different time, totally different age. So now I think that there are more regulations and more restrictions that would be applied and they would really apply a lot of pressure. But, um, you know, unfortunately, with the sexual assaults and the violence against women and the public safety concerns, you know, um, that's always going to be a priority to try to combat those things and to try to prevent such things from taking place. Um, but it would be interesting to see if Freaknik would would be able to revive itself and, and survive in this day and age and in this time. Executive producers for the upcoming Hulu documentary include showrunner uh, Geraldine L. Perez, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, director P. Frank Williams, as well as Dupree, Luther Campbell, of course, Uncle Luke from the Two Live crew. Peter Bittenbender and Melissa Cooper, um, and so many more um, that want to um, get this uh, documentary project um, underway. So right now, the article does not state of a release date for the documentary um but definitely when they do i definitely want to uh see that documentary and i'll come back with my commentary um about it so let me check right now and see when the release date uh will be So if you guys have ever been to Freaknik, that if you come across this uh, video, share in the comments your experiences, your thoughts on it. Um, tell me if you are going to watch the documentary. Let me know what's up. be released on Hulu. Let's find out if they have a release date. Uh, here's something that was posted 12 hours ago. Um, let's see. Okay, so right now there is no release date, um, but there's no doubt it will bring back a lot of good and bad memories for people across Atlanta and from other 
areas um, of the state um, in the country. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, because I'm quite sure people came from all over to um, have that experience. Uh, so, whenever they come up with a release date, um, I will definitely keep you posted and I will be back to share my thoughts on that documentary. Can't wait to check it out. All right, so until next time, peace, love, and good vibes.